welcome back to the blog. So I'm actually really enjoying this speaking to a thing. I didn't think I would really, but actually it's great because we get to go around with the teacher and listen to all of his talks and stuff. And then afterwards, because we're going with him, we can hang out with him and ask him questions and he explains everything to us, which is great because otherwise, honestly, I wouldn't have a clue what he was on about. Like, the stories are really good, but kind of confusing at times. This one he was telling today, um, it was about seeds and farmers and stuff. But I don't have any seeds, but I do have coffee beans. So I'll tell it with these. There was this farmer who planted roasted coffee beans and some of them landed in sugar and they had high and then they crashed. Some of them bounce off, land on the floor and get eaten by kids. Others land in a coffee grinder and increase productivity, some by 30, some by 60 and some by 100%. The seeds are the stories that he's telling and some people receive those stories and plant them and they grow up well. Other people, they're just too busy and the, the seeds get strangled while they're trying to grow up and they don't actually do anything because they're too busy. And other people sort of receive the stories nicely but then they, they don't actually do anything with it. So it does actually make sense. One, one thing I like as well is that the stories he tells about money are actually practical advice. He's not like most of the other preachers around who, you know, they're all, you must give me all of your money and then you will be blessed. If you do not give me your money, you will burn. I really find it hard to take that stuff seriously. But his stories, they're good. Like this one about these three bank managers and they're all given money by an investor and they have to do something with it. And they all choose different strategies. You know what? That story would actually work pretty well with puppets. I don't have time today, but if someone reminds me in the comments, then I'll get onto it in a few weeks' time. So the teacher has a cousin, John, who's also a bit of a preacher and a bit more on the lunatic fringe side of things. He's out living rough by the river and eating random insects and stuff. and telling people that they're unclean and they need to repent. Honestly, the first half about people being unclean, anyone could tell them. Anyone with a functioning nostril could tell them. And about needing to repent, sure, it's what preachers tell people to do. And so people are repenting and they're going down there and he's dunking them under the water and they're coming up clean and living new lives and stuff. Great. And so the teacher decided we should go and visit his cousin. So out we all troop together. When we get there, the teacher decides he also wants to go out and get wet. And John is like, No way, man. Dude, you're like the Lamb of God. Which, to me, sounds as if God wants to cover him with mint sauce and have him for dinner. But, you know, John's been living on insects for ages now, so he's probably obsessed with food. Everything's some kind of food analogy to him. So anyway, John is a big fan of the teacher, so he, he did what he was asked to eventually. The teacher comes out of the water and then a miracle occurs. Peter decides to go and have a bath. This is probably the first bath that he's had ever since Peter, the rockhead, was a wee little pebble. We're all so proud of him. Unfortunately, he forgets to take his clothes in to get cleaned as well. So when he comes out, he still smells like a dead fish. Honestly, it's been ages since he's been fishing and he still smells like haddock. What is wrong with the man? So after that, we all had to go out and have a dunking. More out of peer pressure than anything else. At least the water was warm. And now we're going back on the road again. I don't know when I'll get a chance to blog again, so until next time.